Let's say on the breakfast and plus TV Africa, it's time when we take you through the pages of a national dailies, uh, hoping to get you great insight and analysis. We have Tunde Kolawole who joins the conversation via phone. Tunde Kolawole, it's good to have you join us this beautiful morning. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much. I hope you're not stuck in traffic uh, trying to get uh, petrol for No, we're trying to get by. All right, then. Uh, let's start off with the Punch newspaper this morning, looking at all of the uh, big stories and every relevant story on the paper. Now, the bold caption for the Punch says, Fuel scarcity worsens. Black market booms at 300 naira per litre. Now, others are saying that we're actually looking at 500 naira per litre. The question would be, if Nigerians cannot even get afford this petrol, this product, how do these black market people thrive, you know, in the midst of scarcity? Marketers insist on price increase and fuel stations are just palms. Hard products. Motorists lament 100% fair hike and marketers differ on 1 billion naira payment to NNPC. We cannot justify subsidy removal. Western countries subsidizing fuel too. President Mohammed Buhari is quoted on that. Don't forget, he's also the minister, uh, you know, in charge of uh, the Ministry of Petroleum. Uh, w we move away from that. These are the writers you find underneath the board caption. Cost of powering telecom services to heat 720 billion naira. And presidential poll, Atiku raises the team to war Wiki, Rivers Governor's Camp Adamant. Uh, that's, that's interesting. Buhari nominates seven ministers, three APC senators dumped uh, the party. And body of breaches raises peace panel as Supreme Court justifies fight of the Chief Justice of Nigeria or the chief judge, however you want to look at it. Now, banks record 1.2 trillion naira non-performing loans. State to lose 19 billion naira in oil gas revenue, according to the World Bank. NYSC swears in core members warns against fake news. And also, looking at the punch, cancel fumes and probe states for sacking 9,392 teachers. Uh, you want to find out what's going on in Kaduna State. 2,079 die in 68 mass killings. According to a report, Electoral Act reps move to override Buhari's uh, veto stalled. You also find pipeline vandalism. IPOP dismisses allegation and Buhari blames group. We're talking about pipeline vandalism right there. BTR driver flees as crushed Mother dies and daughter hospitalized. Ogun caught remands five more suspected monarch killers. Now, the headlines you, you would find on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Away from the Punch, we take a look at the leadership. On the leadership newspaper, again, President Mohamed Buhari orders rescue of Kaduna train attack victims. Others, uh, that's what you find. Registered voter registration surge. Stakeholders worried over January collection date for new PVCs. Uh, I, I think that uh, some persons are making a lot of effort to get their PVCs. And there's, there's a lot of information that might need to be put out there by INEC. So the people are in the know. Says it's too close to 2023 polls. Effective distribution not guaranteed. Catholic churches advocate PVC sensitization at worship centers. Prosecute vote buyers in equity. Peace committee tells security agencies. President nominates replacement for Amechi Akpabio or new others. And low supply from NMPC depot heightens fuel scarcity. Yobe primaries, Machina faults Adamu over laws, uh, over Lawan's participation's claim. Uh, 
you know, the, the, the claim is that there was a secret, uh, some sort of secret primaries that took place where the Senate president, Ahmed Lawan, participated. Let's not forget that Ahmed Lawan was also in the race, vying to become uh, the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress. So he, 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 he can contest the elections in 2023. We're talking about the 2023 presidential ambition. I'm just wondering. Uh, away from that, you find I want Tunubu to succeed me. The president is quoted. Buhari, Aregba Shola launches 10,000 e-passports. Again, you find the chief uh, judge in Nigeria blames George's poor conditions on economic realities. Well, this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. We'll move away from the leadership and turn our attention to the nation. Why we dropped subsidy removal plan by Buhari? Why we dropped subsidy removal plan by Buhari? We cannot ignore human consequence of such action. Only CBN board can determine Emefili's fate. The U.S. United Kingdom should blacklist IPOP. Riders underneath the bold caption, three APC senators join PDP, NNPP. Mackinde relocates deputy's office. Uh, find out what that's about. Again, petrol scarcity worsens, motorists and commuters groan. Uh, you need to see the drama uh, if you are on the streets of Lagos. President orders security chiefs to rescue train attack victims now. And you find another caption here underneath the, uh, the leadership. I mean, we're talking about the bottom of the uh, paper this morning. Weak case temperament denied him vice president slots, says ex-governor. And Lagos condemns illegal evacuation of wetlands in Magodo. Umana five orders tipped as minister. Song Wolu heads 86-man 80, Oshun election council. The writers you find uh, or caption on the, on the nation newspaper this morning. And just before then, we move away. Justice Memo, the chief judge of Nigeria, defends Supreme Court's integrity. Uh, the stories on the Nation newspaper this morning. But away from the Nation, we take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Now, on the Guardian, Supreme Court cash trapped. CJN replies angry justice. Ohanese debunks endorsement of Tunubu as. CNG clarifies position on Okoa. You can see also a picture of uh, vehicles that are being lined up, apparently trying to uh, get petrol close to a filling station. You could see that uh, pictorial representation of what's going on with fuel scarcity. Petrol, federal government insists on 165 naira. Pump price, advice against panic buying. Protest rocks Enugu over PVC registration huddle. And Okoa's vice presidential slot only hope for Niger Delta. IYC tells aggrieved stakeholders. Mother of APC senatorial candidate abducted in Jigawa. And the bold caption reads, Buhari to Western government. Nigeria operates own economic model. Mm. Rules out fuel subsidy removal. Okay. Western countries implement fuel subsidy, ask Nigerians to remove it. Defend CBN's intervention says only its board can sanction a Mayfili for alleged infraction. Proscribe IPOP, stop shielding its leader. President urges Western government. Buhari dumps Amechi Akpabio orders and sends new ministerial nominees to Senate. Well, these are the headlines you find this morning on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. We have Tunde Kola Wolo, who is a legal practitioner. He joins the conversation this morning. Tunde, it's good to have you join us via phone. Uh, let's share your thoughts on the big Thanks stories on our national dailies. Yes, please. Well, uh... 
from where do I even start? All the stories you have on the front pages of the papers, and also as a fact, and not feeling that would make anybody smile. It is either that of a scarcity of wealth, which is causing a lot of hardship in the land, or people being killed in this place, all over the country. But with that as it may, I would like to start from the disagreement between the justices of the Supreme Court and the CGN of Nigeria. Because that has happened to be my primary constituency. I would like to say that the funding of the judiciary, when compared to other arms of government, has been nothing to write home about. So the caller will do we see we have Hello, um, yeah, I'm hearing, are you hearing me? Loud and clear, go ahead with your thoughts. Oh, so I was saying that um, the funding of the Supreme Court or the trustee sector compared to the executive of government and the legislator has not, has not been anything to write home about. The judiciary is considered, is considered as an offer by the executive arm of government. I will therefore like to appeal to the executive arm of government to ensure that the judiciary is amply funded like all the other two arms of government. What the executive arm of government doesn't remember or know is that whatever happens in the justice sector has a direct impact has a direct uh, relationship with us, or with what is happening in the economic arena, with what is happening with regards to security. It has implications even on the poor that is either available or not available. But for the exact of government, they think they can do away with the judiciary. What is happening between the CGN and his brother's decision, it's uh, very, very embarrassing. Totally unexpected. I'm not too sure this kind of a thing happens in the other countries of the world. So, the earlier this matter is resolved, the better. Thank God, the body of vengeance has stopped him. I hope they will be able to prevail on all the parties. So sit their swords and then concentrate on the responsibility of delivering justice to all Nigerians without fear or favor. The other area I want to comment about has to do with the pipeline vandalization. The authorities are blaming IPOP for pipeline vandalization. And I put this denying that they have never engaged in that kind of activity. To the best of our knowledge, I am not too sure that I put we engage in that kind of um, very, very irresponsible uh, action or activity. And if you look at it critically, how many of these pipelines can you even say passes through a number in and some of these other equal states, such that people could lay hands on them with view to vandalizing them. So, the government has better look for the culprits who are engaged in this pipeline vandalization, other than crime foul, when uh, IPOP are not the one responsible for what is happening. All right, can uh... be sure. If I thought this was possible, they would hold up to it. Furthermore, Tunde Kolawale, um, right? let's let's come, let's look at the the Guardian newspaper. I mean, he, okay. he, you live in Lagos, and so it's okay to say you're Lagosian. Uh, the question here is, uh, with fuel scarcity, I mean, we've seen the long queues 
uh, already, and uh, it's causing a lot of, uh, you know, hardship and discomfort to the people right here. But what exactly do you think would be responsible for the skews that have returned? Now, on The Guardian, we have uh, the president saying to the Western countries or Western government that Nigeria operates her own economic model. And so uh, it's ruling out fuel subsidy removal. Could it also be that, you know, uh, subsidy has been removed? I mean, this has been implemented. Well, I agree with Mr. President that in the third world economy, not our own, a dependent economy, a rental economy that doesn't produce anything, it is the society for any government to say that it will remove subsidies. People were producing petroleum products in Nigeria and at very optimal level that we can satisfy our domestic needs. Then there wouldn't be any cause for alarm to remove the poor subsidy. But we don't produce these things here. We import basically and totally all the petroleum products that we consume in the country. So if you remove the subsidy with the high cost or the daily fortune of the Naira, what is going to be the lot of the common man? The cost, the prices of poor products will go up, and you will have a polar effect from goods and services. The president is also right that the Western world, they also subsidize petroleum products and agricultural products and some other products. How do they subsidize petroleum products in the Western world? They do it through the regulated uh, transfer shares that commuters are allowed to pay in those countries of the world. Since we don't do that here, and then if you now remove source of it, it is the double jeopardy for our people. Life will become more difficult. And so Nigeria, having an economic model, I disagree with Mr. President. Nigeria does not have any clear thought economic model. What we are practicing is an hybrid capitalism, a combination of both capitalism and welfareist economy. And then to compound it all, it is a rental economy, economy that depends solely on the rent and the uh, levies, charges, and what have you that they collect from the petroleum sector. If you come to the other economic model of your own, then the nation wouldn't be as dependent on importation as it is today. We would rather be producing more than 65% of whatever we consume domestically. So, to this extent, the president is both right and totally wrong with the economy paradigm that is ascribed to Nigeria when, in actual fact, there is no economic model Nigeria is practicing. Hmm. All right. Um, let's also still stay with the issue of fuel scarcity that has worsened. All right. And you have um, the black market uh, booming at 300 naira per litre. The question is, in the midst of this scarcity, how do you have this market, you know, making so much progress and prospering? I mean, how, how do they even have access, you know, to this product? That's on the one hand. Marketers are also in, insisting on price increase and uh, you know, fuel stations adjusting the, the pump price. But the president is also saying, or the presidency, insisting on 165 naira per liter. How do we explain this? Is it that subsidy has been removed or subsidy has not been removed? Could it be the handiwork of these marketers? What exactly is going on? Because it feels like we, we, we don't seem to have answers. Well, my sister, it's a very, very complex issue. Complex in the sense that uh, we are a nation that is helpless. Helpless in the sense that whatever affects fuel in the international market, and with war going on in Ukraine, and with Russia net deep in this, this has had a ripple effect 
on some of these challenges that the nation is facing. You and I are also competent with the fact that the fortune of the Naira has been dwindling compared to the dollar, compared to the pan sterling. The value of Naira has been falling almost on a daily basis. And if you have to import the petroleum products that you consume and most of these other goods and services, then you could be rest assured that prices will go up. And if prices go up, the importance of those people, of the poor products who have no option other than to also increase the price because they are not protecting it locally. They buy it at the international market. What the Naira could buy for them some three months ago in the international market, he could no longer buy that now. But if they are not to wind up their dispensing, if they are not to be running at a loss, if the subsidy uh, is not going to be enough to cushion the effect of their cost of importing and distribution and sales, then they will have no option other than to also tack up the price. A few further that will happen, we sold all over the country today, are the ones the public have had in their different reports before the scarcity began. It could also be the one that some of these petroleum uh, petrol stations have been holding in anticipation because they are studying the market trend that sooner than later there is going to be scarcity and on another to make a windfall out of the first scarcity, they will want some of these products and then begin to sell it at very astronomical prices when the scarcity indeed do arrive as it has come today. Imagine if they bought the product at 150 naira per liter and they are selling at 300 naira now, you could see the differential, the kind of jumbo profit they would have been making from that. So, even with the subsidy, you and I do know that the federal government don't pay the importers or the marketers of these products. The subsidy has at one due. They virtually, the importers virtually have to go to the bank to borrow money to import these products. And when they borrow the money, it is at a very I mean, astronomical interest rate compound interest. So by the time they import, by the time the federal government is paying their subsidy, it might not even be enough to cover the cost of borrowing to import the fuel mm. from abroad. So it's a very complex issue. It is complex, not because there are no solutions, but because we have people who are indolent in government. T -t 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 I mean, it, yeah. it's such a difficult, uh, I mean, it's, like you have said, it's a complex situation because I, I think that Nigerians deserve to understand the reason why um, this product is not being available. Uh, we're talking about the scarcity. There are a lot of, um, you know, issues that have been put out, a lot exactly. of thoughts that have been put out. But there's no statement from, you know, the minister himself. Uh, we're talking about the Minister of Petroleum Resources, uh, the president. Uh, there's they never no, tell the uh, there's no statement because you also have uh, some quotas saying that uh, the low supply from NMPC is also responsible for uh, fuel scarcity. And let's not forget that uh, NMPC is solely saddled with the responsibility of bringing in this product. So even the NMPC is broke. Can you say that again? I say even the NMPC is broke. It's not that they wouldn't be telling you the truth. Okay, they so get their money from the central bank. They have currency from the central bank. And when they have currency, it's not available in the central bank. For them to import the product, how will they do it? And you and I do know, too, that fuel is no longer selling as it used to be in the international market. So, so because people are investing in alternative energy now. I have been saying it out without from that. Sooner than later, petroleum products will be like coal that nobody wants to have anything to do with. All right.
Well, I think we need to move away from that, but it's, it's just quite uh, worrisome mm -hmm. when one cannot actually be certain uh, with the situation, what exactly is the problem here? Is it that uh, the low supply from NMPC is causing the issue? Could, could it just be uh, an artificial scarcity that uh, in, marketers are holding this product? Mm -hmm. Or subsidy has been removed? Exactly. I mean, so many questions, but um, answers will definitely come soon. Now, let's look at the leadership newspaper. It talks about the voter registration surge. Stakeholders are worried over January collection date for the new PVCs. Uh, there's been a lot of concern about extension of dates so uh, you have Nigerians who can go in and continue with the process so they can, uh, you know, get their PVCs, maybe temporary uh, PVC slips or so, uh, to enable them to be part of the elections. The question here is, why can't we have a system where uh, people register and get the PVCs immediately? What exactly? I mean, What's, what's so difficult in getting the, the PVCs immediately after getting registered? Well, you see, Nigeria is a very peculiar country. Peculiar in so many respects. If I'm not mistaken, I think the 2023 election will begin to take place in February 2023. So if you're asking people, to so begin to collect their PCT, PVC, in the January, how will they be able? Or will it still be possible for them to participate in an election that is taking place in February? Taking cognizance of um, the difficulties, the logistic problems that the nation has always seen in distribution of some of these uh, PVCs. A man who registered in Lagos will sometimes find out that his PVC has been taken to Port Harcourt. Why the man in Port Harcourt will find out that the PVC is lying somewhere in Meduguri simply because we are not master of logistics when it comes to issues as simple as merely distribution of means of identification. I should want to say that the reason we are having some of these challenges is the vendor system that I may also apply, I mean apply. Too many times, the production of these PVCs are not given to those who have the competence to really produce them. They are given to party cronies, they are given to relations, they are given to acquaintances with the view to make money from those projects. You may even be surprised that the PVC may be produced in this country. Whereas, Nigeria has the wherewithal to produce those PVCs. Printing, like I said before, started here in Nigeria as far back as the, is it 40 or 50? The way in Yoruba was already being produced in Abel Kuta. And if you go to Shomoli, if you go to Barika, and you go to Ilupetu, there is nothing that you want to print that the Nigerian printers cannot print for you. All we require to do is to empower them to acquire some technologies to be more efficient in the manufacturing and production of these things. I should say that whatever happened with regard to this uh, incompetence in both the production, distribution, and usage of PVCs, the blame should be passed finally to INE and to the executive arm of government that has shown incompetence in virtually almost all the activities, in almost all the programs, in almost everything that they have laid their hands on since they got to power about seven years ago. All right, uh, on the nation, just before we move away, it talks about um, it, it, it talks about also another issue that we're looking at, and it's the issue of having uh, to say that uh, the president or the security chief to rescue train attack victims, uh, you know, 
what do you make of this? I mean, you remember the unfortunate <laughs> incident and the president... That is the show of the nation. That is uh, the, 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 the biggest shame of the nation. That people have been kidnapped many months ago and they are doctors are reaching out to people in government. They are reaching out to families of those who have been kidnapped. And with the nature of the sophisticated technology that are available today to locate wherever anybody might be, and with the nature of technology that is available to carry out rescue operations, we as Nigerians, we as a people, we, with all the different armed forces that we have all over the places, we cannot rescue people who were kidnapped from the train attack so many months ago. Well, I have said this time without number, even though I'm not uh, a soldier or a military man, but do you know it is possible seeking assistance of uh, friendly nations who have the technology? You could use GPS, you could use a satellite, you could use drones to detect where these people are being kept. And when you have detected where they are being kept, do you know it is possible to drop a smoke bomb on their camp and everybody in that camp will slip off? And then you send in your paratrooper, the army, uh, the air force, who drop in paratroopers in there to rescue the people that are being kidnapped and probably neutralize their kidnappers. But the truth of the matter is, from revelations we got from the village of the Methodist church that was kidnapped not too long ago, and the youth copper, the lady youth copper who was kidnapped long ago, and then from some of the arrests that have been made, it will appear that a few bad eggs within the military, within the police, and the other security forces are colluding with the kidnappers and have done kidnapping to a very, very huge and highly lucrative business. It is probably more lucrative now than politics, the act of kidnapping. And when you have that kind of a collusion, it will be difficult for you as a nation to be able to do the needful we did to rescue your people. Why we blame the government? You must also blame the security people for not inventing, for not uh, for their lack of creativity in the ability, in their ability to rescue whoever they are being kidnapped. For God's sake, people are being kidnapped, and this has been taking place for more than ten years. When Boko Haram was kidnapped. The top key girls, the school girls in the Porono State. And we say since 10 years ago, we have not been able to map our strategy and tactics and also design models with which we will be able to rescue whoever is kidnapped in Nigeria. Furthermore, recollect that an American citizen, that's one person, and he was kidnapped, is either in Niger or Chad, and he was brought to, him, to Nigeria here. And the Americans, came all the way from America to rescue that single person who was kidnapped without uh, inflicting casualties on them. And they were also able to neutralize those who kidnapped the person. Tunde Kola Wale. Yeah. Uh, let's move away from that quickly now because right. uh, we, we just have a few more minutes before we call it a wrap. Now, on yeah. the leadership newspaper, it talks about, um, you know, the senatorial seat in Yuben North, and uh, there seemed to be a lot of conflict, or maybe some, uh, you know, argument, however you want to put it, uh, put it with China and Ahmed Lawan. Now, according to the chairman, Adamu, he's saying that uh, Ahmed Lawan, that's the Senate president, participated in a, sec in a secret senatorial primaries in Yobe. Uh, that's the APC primaries that happened, and there's, there's been a lot of back and forth. Uh, you, what do you make of this secret uh, senatorial primaries? Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, from some of the things we read in the other papers, 
il faut la faire. Ça t'amène là où on est au lit du cake à notre harvest. Tu amènes nous, tu conseilles de présenter une élection. Ça te lance. Et puis quand on a des portes pour la théâtre, la hypothèse, c'est que nous sommes à fort. On a somebody to hold that the slot for him. And the man who is holding the slot for him, is not only saying that we're not going to give that position, that we're not going to give that position for him. That is my contextor. Because it is not possible for me and Lawa to have a protest in the presidential form and also protest the senatorial form. The concern of the PDP, the laws of the land, that is the electoral act, and also the constitution does not permit people or does not give power, allow people to contest two elections at the same time. Because you find that most times those elections will find the Senate and the presidency or with the House of Red probably take place at the same time. So how do you not protest so, Nicola, we, we have to go now. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your thoughts and your time, your perspective this morning. Uh, These politicians are criminals. Hmm. Tunde Kolawole, thank, thank you for, for me. Yes, thank you so thank much you for, for bringing uh, your insight on the stories this morning. We appreciate you. Have a great day. Tunde Kolawole, I beg your pardon, is a legal practitioner. And he's been bringing great insights and sharing his thoughts on the front pages of a national dailies. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a break now. But just before then, let's let you know what happened today in history.